Good evening, everybody. How's everybody this evening? Good. It's good to be back in God's house. Uh, thank the Lord for the opportunity for us to be able to be here. I think about it. There's a, there's a lot of people that's at home that are hopefully watching and aren't able to be here that do have the desire to be here. So let's just remember them in prayer. Uh, there's many others, all the people that's been affected by the COVID virus, not just in our church, but everywhere. It just seems like we've had a really strong outbreak in our area. Anybody else? Let's remember the preacher Caleb this evening. Um, we'll do the uh, tithes and offerings on the way out. The plate will be back there at the back door. That way, nobody's touching nothing. You just, if you got anything, drop it in the plate on your way out. Um, if you would, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Remember these? Yep, it's in front of the pulpit. Father, it's called. Father God, we thank you and pray this morning, Lord, for the Lord's return. We pray, Lord, for the day that you give us today, Lord, again, we call upon your name again this evening, Father, to be in your house, Lord. And Lord, we do pray, Lord, that for our church as a whole, Lord, that you would touch our hearts, Lord, give people will, Lord, where they could be able to be back in the house of God, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that's not able, Lord, that you would continue to be with them, Lord. Pray that you send them in and at least getting something out of their, their life stream services, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you would just move across this nation, Lord, and help our nation as a whole to be a nation under you and not before you, Lord. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would just continue to touch each and every heart, Lord. We pray for those that are lost and don't know you as Lord and Savior, Father, that today would be the day they would come to know you and accept you into their heart and their life, Lord. Lord, we claim those that are back seated condition and draw them back nigh to you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us. Touch our service tonight, Lord. Touch the preaching. Touch preacher Caleb, Lord. Anoint him and give him liberty to preach tonight, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us, Lord, to receive what you'd have for us tonight, Lord, and apply it to our everyday lives, Lord, and keep it near and dear to our hearts, Father. And Lord, help us to carry it out to be a help to somebody else, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to help our church. Touch our pastor this evening in the last night of the revival charity missions, Lord, be with them. Touch them and you know the needs that they have, Lord. Lord, for the revival up there, Lord, and all these, all these churches, Lord, that are standing, Lord, and keeping the doors open, Lord, and that your word will go forth, Lord, to be a help to the people, Lord, touch each and every preacher that will be preaching tonight, Lord, and have your way, Father, and Lord, we love you this evening, and Lord, we thank you, touch us, please, and yes, Lord, touch him, Jesus. Yes, 
Page 92 in your hymn book.
Anybody got a word from the Lord? Amen. Aren't you glad that this church sticks with the old stuff? We don't need nothing new. We need what's in that book right there. The King James Bible. It was good enough for my day, yeah. your daddy, your grandparents. It's good enough for us right here tonight. We don't need nothing else. Yeah, we need know. Jesus. That's what we need. You pray for this preacher as he comes and brings the word this morning. Yeah. Or this evening. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
this desk without you. I can't do what you've called me to do. God, without you on me tonight, I pray, Father, God, that you would take this message, Lord, that you prepared in my heart, Lord, that you would put the hearts and lives of your people, God, and change them, God, conform them, and I pray, Father, that you would get all glory, God, all praise tonight, Lord, I love you, God, you know I praise you for all that you do, in Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We find in the book of Esther, chapter number four, we understand if you study this book at all, we understand that she has been, she is now queen of all over the land. But if you study previously in chapter number one, the previous queen named Abishai, he does away, the king does away with her, and now he calls for all the maidens of the land. He wants them to come together, and he was wanting them to, he was wanting to whatever which one pleased him the most, that would be the next queen. And we understand here that he picked, and he picks Esther, and he he puts her in as queen. But I, her her great uncle named Mordecai. If you study him out, you study what he did. We find here the right hand man to the king, which is Haman. He decreed, he sends a decree, he sends a decree all over across all the land to the, get away with all the Jews, do away with all of them, because he, they, he was wanting all of them to bow to him. But when everybody bowed to him, that there was one name, there was one man named Mordecai that stood strong. He stood with the backbone like a saw long, and he said, I do not bow to you, but I bow to the holy God all, all by, by myself. Number one, I want you to see here by introduction, you'll find that Mordecai, his stance, he, he stood for God. If we're going to, if we're in dark times and depressing times, I understand most of y'all watch the news and you ought to turn it off. But if I understand you watch that and it's discouraging, it's depressing, and you find everybody, they're bowing down to the government, they're bowing down to everything. And uh, may I say this, if you're blood bought born again, you don't bow down to a man, you don't bow down to a president, you don't bow down to a governor, but you bow down to a Christ only God that saved your every dying soul from hell. And if we ever needed some people in the day in which we're living in, and that would stand strong upon this book, and I'm talking about the inherent Bible, Word of God, the King James Bible. Right there, it did something in my heart, and I 
actually living it. I still believe it's going to live it. And if you're going to preach it, you best believe that. Amen. Amen. You better be submitted. And I believe that we are living in the last days. I believe that, it, that before we get out of here tonight, that eastern sky, it could split wide open and Christ could come after his bride. But until then, we've got to have some people that will stay submitted. I understand the devil's beat your brains out for the week. I understand he's fought you. And I understand when you go to work, they mock at you, they laugh at you. And I understand when you go to work at some time that your boss, he, try, he tries to mock and blaspheme everything you've done. But you've got to stay submitted. It doesn't matter what the world does. It doesn't matter how many times they laugh at you. God's taking note of it all. And one of these days you'll be rewarded for it. I encourage you tonight. You just stay submitted before God. And let God do the rest. I'm reminded by the children of Israel when they come up to the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army was to, uh, it, it was he was wild, he was on them like wild on rice. And next thing you know, there was one that man named Moses that rose up in faith. He didn't rise up in fear, but he rose up in faith and said, "Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." For this day, the Lord shall fight for you. You've got God fighting for you. You've got a God that is able to do it. See abundantly of all that you can ever ask or think. He's never left you one time and you can march on and know that there's a God up in heaven that sees the struggles that you go through. He sees the times you've been mocked and laughed at but you just stay submitted before God and I promise you, God will fight your battles for you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You say, preacher, you still ain't told us what it's got to deal with this. You ain't got past Mordecai yet. But he come to he goes up to Esther and he says, Now you understand, if you study your Bible at all, you understand this that Esther is a Jew. The right hand man of the king, he sends a, he sends a decree out all over the land. He gets the king drunk and has him sign off on it. Saying this is going, this is what's going to happen. Now Esther's a Jew. You said, preacher, what's that got to do, deal with? So he sends a decree after all the land saying that we're going to kill all the Jews. We're going to get rid of them. But Mordecai, he comes up to Esther. And he walks up to her and he said, For thou art kind to the kingdom for such a time as this. You say, preacher, what in the world does, does that mean? He was trying to get her to realize that she ain't going to make it happen just because you're sitting up in the king's palace. And God, God has ordained, he is a point in time for this. And he, he puts this little old woman named Esther. You barely even know about it because she's only got one book in the Bible. This is the only time you'll ever hear about it. One little lady changed the whole nation. One little lady changed the whole, for such a time as this. And that's what I want to preach on is that thought tonight. For such a time as this. Now I'm going to get into the message. There's three things that Esther knew. Number one, if you're taking notes, she knew her position. She knew that God had put her in a position to do something. And I believe if Jesus Christ ever saved you, ever died for you, ever put his blood on your life, that that means you've been put in a position to do something. I just believe this. I mean, you might get mad if you want to, but I believe that God just didn't save anybody to sit on a church pew and wait on the rapture just to happen. No, he, he saved you for a purpose, and he's put you here in a position to do something. You say, preacher, they don't listen to me at work. All they do is laugh at me. God's taking note of it all. If you study Esther's name out, it literally means this right here. It means star. You know what she was in a dark time? She was just a little old lie. And I believe this tonight, that we should, we should let our lives show shine before the world. We ought not put a bushel over it. We ought to let that shine on and shine on and shine on because you're not showing yourself, but you're showing the one that, they, that they've been mocking at you and laughing at you because this, because that one that bled and died for you is the same one that bled and died for them and you can make it different and God's put you in a position and you can let your light shine so bright before the world that they don't see you, but they see Christ. Yes, Amen. 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 That's good. Amen. 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 And if you ain't showing light, take your bushel off of it. 
Oh, Paul said this. In Philippians chapter, I believe it's chapter number 3. He said this. He said that I may win Christ. I was studying that one day. You ever read your Bible and you say, what in the world did Paul mean by that? Because Paul says a lot of things in that book that I don't quite get. He said that I may win Christ. And I looked at that word. When if you study your Bible at all, you understand Old Testament's Hebrew. New Testament is Greek, and I looked that up. And Paul said this, that I may win Christ. He wanted favor with Christ. He wanted to be so close with Christ that I mean Christ could tell him some secrets in his heart. That God, not only does he let you tell what's on your heart to him, but think about this, it'll blow your mind, it blows my mind. And I about flipped my desk when the Holy Ghost told me this. He said, not only let you tell what's on your heart to him, but he tells what's on his heart to you. And if we've ever needed some people that had favor with Christ, it is right now. Amen. I understand it's dark. I understand Washington, D.C., they can't count right, so they can go back to elementary school. And I ain't trying to be political, but they've lost their ever loving mind. But we still have to meet some people that have found favor with Christ. And just like Noah, rise up and find grace in the eyes of the Lord in a dark time and know that God's put me in a position and I can make a difference in this world. God put you here on purpose for a purpose. Say, preacher, nobody listens to me. And I just feel like God's done with me. If he was really done with you, you wouldn't still be here right now. You done been up in heaven right now. But you still have a purpose. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are or how seasoned you really are. You still got a purpose. You still got something worth dying for. You still got a cause in this day to march on, show Christ, and let your light so brightly shine before the world. Amen. Amen. She knew her position. Man, see this. What's the position that God's put you in? I think about this. I see these little kids you pick up. God's put you in a position to reach them. I mean, God's put you in a position to serve your pastor. And I was thinking about this just today. I was thinking about it. You're trying to make your head bigger and say, Say amen. Just say that. I got to think about this today. You know you show Christ more by serving your preacher praying for him. Because Christ didn't come in this world to mainly be worshipped. He walked around with the eye. Instead of taking on a crown, he took it on a towel to wash his disciples' feet. He took on the role of a servant when he shouldn't have worshipped. And that shows Christ. God's put you in a position to show Christ all. You've been faithful to your husband all these years. Hallelujah. Amen. For 40 some years. Amen. God's put you in a position because you've been faithful to him. But now all these younger couples watching said, I'd like to have something like that. I was talking with your daughter before service. Every time I've come here, I don't know what it is about this place, but yeah, some of y'all have Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> Say amen, Richard. <laughs> Half of y'all is Pentecostal. And if we let you speak in tongues, you probably do it. Every time, I, I don't know what it is, but every time I swung my coat, she picked it up, make sure it wasn't wrinkled when I go to the preacher, when I go to the preacher. Y'all might think it's funny. It shows Christ. Everything you do, every kind thing you do, shows Christ off. Whoever put that bottle of water up there, thank the Lord for it. We got a little guy in our church. He comes in. He, he's not been out to come. He's in a wheelchair. He's an amputee now. Before, you know, it, it's these people we always overlook. God help us. But it's, it's the smallest thing. Amen. But I was, I get to thinking about him before he was put in a wheelchair. Every 
every single service, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, anytime we have revival, you go in that bathroom, you take a glass, you feel that water, and you make sure you drink water. There's a little old lady in our church before she got sick, she always used to get out the vacuum cleaner and vacuum the car. God's put you in a position to do something. I don't care how small it is. I don't care if you're up there behind the pulpit throwing your tonsils in the back wall. You still show the Christ. And be honest with you, because you serve your man of God and you pray for him, did you know you get as much as reward as he does? Did you know if every soul has been ever saved in his ministry, you get as much as a reward as he does? That's how God works. That when nobody sees you, you say, preacher, nobody sees you. It's not about being seen or heard. Let's get that, let's get that right there. It's not been about it's not been about seen or heard. If you want to be seen or heard, go out there on the street or go to a ball game and scream your lungs out all you want to. But when you come in here, it's not about that. It's about glorifying Christ. Every breath you take, I will not leave this world. Every breath I breathe, I want it to be for Christ. Every step I take, I want it to be for Christ. And God's put me in a position. I go to work with some people and a bunch of drugs. You know what God's put me in? He's put me in a position to show Christ off to them. I mean, I, I, I had a co-worker just the other day. He began to talk to me and began to tell me. He asked me, he said, do you think, you, think that, you think when we get to heaven that I'm going to notice my little girl? I said, I don't understand. I can't really answer that. But you know what I was able to do? I was able to show Christ off in that. The man's never stepped foot in the church hardly in his life unless it's for a special occasion and he goes home and he gets drunk. But you know what God did? He let me show him. He let me take my life and direct him towards the cross and let my light shine, shine on and shine on. You don't walk out of here tonight and you say, devil, I'm taking my bush along and I'm taking my light out in this world. I'm going to let it shine, shine and shine on for the glory of God. It's hard in this world. Amen. It is hard. Here I am taking my jacket off. You can leave it alone. <laughs> you don't have to get up on us. That's all right. That's how my mama is. She won't let me walk out of the house with a wrinkle on my pants. But God put her in I don't know she was, was she, was she alive, but she also loved. Yeah. How can you, I, I understand this, you can probably answer, you've been in ministry longer than I have. I don't understand how people serve the Lord and they don't have a bit of love inside their heart. You ever showed backsliding on the Lord, or you just lost? Because if you're going to, be honest with you. We've got a couple. We got a. We got a couple in our church. We got five kids of their own. I'm not even married. I'm just kind of like, that's a lot of money to pay to put food on the table for them kids. But you understand, they just took on five more on top of us. So we got two people, two families in our church. They, between our household, they got 25 people in their house. The man thing had enough. They had enough bedrooms. You just can't do that, my love. Uh, and if you're doing what you're doing to be seen, and, and I want to put my curtain my eyes say this, you know what? When we get to heaven and we take our crowns off, it's going to make the same sound when we throw it at his feet. Clunk. That ain't in the Bible. That's pure common sense. It's going to make the same sound. It's going to, I, mine's going to make the same sound as yours. Yours is going to make the same sound as mine. Get over your pride. Get over that kind of mess. No, that there's people dying and going to hell, and God needs your mouth to tell them. Amen. 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 God in such humility that only he died for you. But he lets you serve him and let you live in this world to tell people about his son. Let me tell you what we really are.
are. We're just a bunch of recruiters because we had somebody in our life that told us about Jesus. We had somebody preach the gospel unto us. Your daughter would probably be sitting here tonight if y'all too would have been faithful to God. And you would be sitting here tonight if it was not for them. May I say this? We need to get our eyes off ourselves and realize that it's about Christ. It's about showing him all. And may I say this? Let us walk out of here tonight and know that God for such a time as this, in this short time, the reason I went born in the days of Spurgeon, because God wanted me here in 2021. And the reason I was not born in the days of D.L. Moody or the 1800s and all the great awakenings that ever happened is because that God wanted me here for such a time as this, and he wants you here for such a time as this to show that light off and to love people and tell them that they ain't got to die and go to hell, but they can go to heaven with you to know that they can be saved and forgiven and born again. Amen. 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 Somebody give me an amen right here. Okay. Thank you. That's pretty good. <laughs> she knew this. She knew that she could plead. In other words, let's just say this. I love it. She knew she could pray. Listen, listen. Look in the Bible right here. Okay. Some of y'all, I can tell you, you ain't never read the book of Esther because you don't know what I'm talking about here, but I promise you, stay with me, I'm going to take you somewhere. But watch this right here. Look at verse 16. I mean, when I, read, when I first read this, I mean, I just, I mean, I got through everything I had in my room out the window over this. Watch this. She said, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, neither eat nor to drink. Three days. Let's take a time out. It probably do us all so good. I know it could do for me. Y'all can tell, look at me, I don't miss a meal. When's the, let me ask you this. I'm going to get convicted right here when I say it. When's the last time you fasted over something? You missed a meal. Or you, you took some time off your laptop or your phone. And you just got with God. For somebody else and for this God for it. Wow. That stab you right in the heart, take the dagger out too. Amen. But neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. Colossus watches. Also, I and my maidens will fast my fast. So will I go, watch this, unto what? What's your Bible say? King James Bible, the king. Which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. You know what she's saying right here? Not only she knew that she can, she was God put her in a position, but I like this. This is my favorite part of the whole message. But she knew that she could plead. She knew that she could take her knee before the king. I'm gonna say it again. Y'all too quiet on me tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a preacher. I'm, t I'm just kidding. I, that she knew that she could take what she had in her heart, that burden that she knew that she could not fix by herself, to somebody that had greater power than she had. And she took that need before her. She knew that she could go before her husband. She understood that he had the power to do away with it. She understood that she, he had the power to do something. And you say, preacher, what you get? Now, may I say this? You may, you, may, you may not be able to stand up in the pulpit like some of us. You may not be able to get up in a Sunday school class and teach like some people. But you tell you what you can do because you are saved and you are blood bought. You've got the same access to the throne as much as I do. He said this in his word. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You can pray just like I can. And may I say this tonight? Don't quit praying. Don't give up. You keep on praying. As I don't care what the devil's ever told you. You just keep on praying. You keep on going back to give. And you keep on taking that need before God. And watch God turn it all around again. 
I told you last time, I remember the first time I preached here about that, that cellar. I'm going to tell it again. I just got this on my heart, put you. That in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 27, the Bible says that over the cellar's voice, Joash, he had an important role that day. He was the keeper of the oil. He had to protect it. Picture of the Holy Ghost right there. But I... I preached the message on that day about prayer. Go remember that? But there was something like that they called me. They said that they found, they actually found that cellar that where Joash was in. Scientists say, and over in Israel and the Holy Land, that they've actually found that. And you know where it was located? Underneath King David's throne. Here, when you're praying, you're fasting, you've got the Holy Ghost all around you, and you've got the King above you. That's what you need to let that settle in. You've got the Holy Ghost all around you. You've got the Holy Ghost in you. When you're praying, you're your belly with God. He's pushing you to pray. And when you don't pray, he, let me tell you what Brother David Buchanan told me when, I, when he was teaching me about prayer. When, when you pray, you know what Jesus Christ does? He, he takes your prayer, he cleans it up, and he presents it to the Father, and he prays on your behalf. And may I say this tonight, when you got the Holy Ghost praying through you, and you got the King above you, there's no demon in hell that can ever stop you. You say, preacher, it's been hard this last year. I understand it has. But may I say this? Don't quit praying. Don't give up tonight. You keep on going back to the cellar and know that the king is taking go and your prayers is making a difference. I've never prayed for a prayer that God did not hear. I am like tonight. He's sending his word, calling to me, and I will answer thee. I'll show you great mighty things that thou knowest not. You've got one that hears you and can answer you. Amen. 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 She understood this. I wrote this down in my Bible. It was good stuff. Some of y'all don't say, man, I just take it all with me. <laughs> I mean, it's good when you all message blesses you. Kind of. yeah. I love it. Yeah. But watch this. She knew she could go to her, her, her husband, which was the king. But if she knew that her husband didn't want to do something, now he'd be dumb if he didn't. I've, I've noticed this when I was sitting on the bed. Some of you, some of you women, yeah, you better protect your ribs because here she comes. Yeah. I've noticed this. When my stepmom's upset about something, she's burdened, she's got that walk about her. And she's got that look in her eyes. And you sit, my dad sitting back and says, son, go to the kingdom and all will get ready. Amen. But she knew if her husband didn't do something. Watch this. Read verse 16 with me again. She said, Also, I also and my maids will fast likewise. Mordecai, your people, and all, all the people of the land. Y'all pray. But just know this I'm going to be praying too. You said, preach where you're going, but she understood this. She could go to her husband. If he didn't do nothing, but she could go to her heavenly father. Yeah. The one that fearfully and wonderfully made. She was appointed in this position, but she was anointed in this position. You say, if the picture's starting to get real clear to you, some of you start to realize tonight, wow, I, I really do have a part in this thing. It isn't, you little kids, you look, don't look up here at me. Just by sitting there and bragging on your preacher when you go to school. Sam, my preacher puts a good message. You know what this shows? Shows that life. These little kids can make more, much of a difference than they've 
They can't make more of a difference than any message I'll ever preach. I believe that. Sometimes I don't know why I say that, but you all can count some young people. She can go to her heavenly father. When I, when I pray, when I fast and I take, I understand it's strong when I take that need before the Lord. I've never one single time go, this is Jesus Christ. Just leave me a voicemail and I'll get back to you when I can. I've never one single time got a secretary in the fall and said, he's off at business or he's off at lunch or he's taking a nap right now. He'll get back to you right now. Did you know God's got a phone number? Look at that. He's got a phone number. You say, preacher, what's his phone number? It's called J-E-R-333. I don't quote it. Call unto me. I will answer you. That God is such humility. He wants to hear from us. Let me tell you why probably sometimes he's not fixed our nation yet. Because we've got to ask him. What's your Bible say? You have not. Because you ask him. You can plead tonight. You can call on an altar and just like that. What if, it, what if it's tonight? This church gets in such tune with God. They throw them, they, they cast themselves away, they die to self, and they pray. And it could be this place right here, the prayers of this church that call America back to God. I still believe in that. There's one old church. I'm not going to much detail, I'm trying to move quick. There's one old church. It's called Myrtle Baptist in Myrtle, Mississippi. The pastor was Dr. Percy Ray. These people, they had such a burden to pray. And they was in the Great Depression. And if you go look at those buildings over there, I mean, there ain't no telling on how many millions of dollars those buildings are worth. He's got two tabernacles that sit, they see close to 3,000 people a piece. He's got the old church and he's got the new church and that come. They all come from people's prayer. That, did you know that church barely ran over 100 people? It was probably close to 50 people or so. Percy Ray was such a dream of God and through prayer and his church was too that people call all across America asking him to pray for something. Really? go to that new tabernacle now, I've got a picture of it if you want to see it, you don't believe me. Right above his pulpit, right behind it's a big American flag on the wall. He's got an American flag here, Christian flag here holding his Bible. And then right across that big American flag, it says, call America back to God. That place, anytime any preacher you hear about Nowadays, and all the preachers have always got a tie back to that place. But these people show it to me, God, and that church, their, their preacher had a private cell phone. And it was linked up to Washington, D.C. And in the Great Depression, and all that stuff, when all the wars got on, and they had the president had to make a big decision, that chief of staff would call for some day to pray and ask his church to pray. Now, you don't hear about that happening nowadays, but it's still possible. And that church barely, barely got to 100 people. And those people, and if you see anything that's ever happened in the 70s and the 80s on how all the widespread revivals that's ever happened always links back to that place. You say, preacher, you're, you're glorifying the place. I know not. It all links back to prayer because the people knew that in that Great Depression and all that, all that political stuff that was going on, and that was some of the biggest times that 
some of the darkest times. Just the washing the word. We're literally reaping off the decisions right now that was happening back then. But it was it ain't so bad when you think it's bad right now. But those people literally prayed the wrath of God off of our backs today and all over the world. And God still ain't so You say, preacher, what's the point of that? There's people new in that time, there's such a time as that. They might not could be able to go up to the nation's capital. They couldn't make the decisions for them. They knew they could pray. You understand, we might not be able to go up to the White House right tonight and make the decisions for them. I would love to. But you know what we can do? We sure can pray. Because you know what? Prayer is faster than any text message you can ever send. Because as soon as you get the word out of your mouth, it's already up to heaven. That was great. I'm done. Can you get on the guitar and play this song for me, sir? I, I promise I've been, I've been, I've been preaching way too long tonight. I'm getting a little hungry. But I, 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 I'll show you this side. But you know there's only two women in the Bible that ever got their own children? Ruth and Esther. This, hey, God, I'm never here. Let's, let's all go down there here. There's only two women ever in the Bible ever recorded that their own book. Ruth and Esther. You know, you say, preacher, now what's, what's the deal with that? Number three, she knew she had power. No, she had the power of being a queen. I love that part. I mean, she snapped her fingers and something get done. But watch this. You ever notice the most Holy Ghost filled people don't ever recognize them? You ever notice that? There's only two women. There's a lot of women in the Bible that had God on. But there's only two women in the Bible that ever got their own book. And that will show you something she had power. You said, Bridget, what kind of power she had? Holy Ghost power. Mm -hmm. now, now listen to me. You got saved. You know what the Holy Ghost did? Well in you salvation. That same power, Esther chapter 4, that same power that got Jesus up out of the grave is the same power inside of us tonight. Do I get that? Listen to me. But not only does that Holy Ghost dwell in you in salvation, but it fills you through sanctification. That God gets all of you out of the way, gets all of you to Him. You've already got it, but it takes, you know, I, when I go when I go to Zaxby's, they're going to take my cup and they're going to stick it underneath that water. I can't drink sweet tea right now. I've got high blood pressure. I can't drink that stuff right now after I preach. They're going to push that button and you're going to see that water start rising up to the surface. You know what God does? He sticks you right underneath a spot where the water is coming out and he lets that cup get full. When's the, let me ask you this before I go to the next thing. When's the last time you got so full of God? Let me ask you, when's the last time that you ever got over yourself and put yourself to the side and say, God, fill me with your power? Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, what your Bible says, shall be filled. Not only does he fill you through sanctification, but I love this part. But overflows for saturation. Now, if they ain't careful of Zach's feast tonight, they're going to take that cup, and if they ain't looking, they're going to let that cup start overflowing. And it's going to make a big mess. But you know what happens? Is the Holy Ghost is very contagious. The Holy Ghost gets on me and overflows off me, and you know, it's on her. It's on you. It's on you. And next thing you know, we're all getting filled. 
Let me ask you this. You said, Preacher, what's the time of this? You said, what, What's this going to do with this? For such a time as this, God's given you the power. He's given you the Holy Ghost power. And it doesn't matter what the devil tells you. It doesn't matter what the world tells you because you've got one living inside of you that is greater. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And tonight we need to be reminded this world is not over because if you're saved, you're still here. And last time I checked, we ain't going through the tribulation if you think can't read your Bible again. But I'll tell you this. Such a time as this, God's giving you power. You can pray, God's put you in a position to do something. You say, preach, I want God to do something on church. Okay? Such a time as this, realize it. You're in a position where you can do something. You can make Christ glorified. You can pray. Listen to this. I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of the truth? I'm not. You didn't have to pray for me. I, I really don't care. I, I, I ain't doing that. When is the last time that you truly, before you come to a service, find yourself in the cell? You're convicted in the eye. But I'll start this. You've got the power to go out of this world. You say, preacher, there's such an attack against the church. Okay? What's your Bible? So let's go to the Bible. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Look at that for me. Matthew 16, 18. I want you to read it out loud. Say, God, I understand that I can pray. I understand that you put me in a position. 
Anybody else got anything? 